So I'm Professor Lewis. I'm the graduate deputy and I oversee all the graduate programs. And I also am the advisor for the performance area. We have different program heads for the different areas in the conservatory. I'm joined now with, by my colleague, uh, Professor Douglas Cohen. He is uh, the undergraduate deputy and he oversees uh, music composition. So what, uh, what area in the graduate music programs are you interested in? Well, I'm interested in the composition area, in the Master of Music composition. Excellent. Okay, so I'm going to let my colleague, uh, Professor Cohen, give you specific information. But in the meantime, I have a, uh, a PowerPoint uh, to show you what, that will give you an overview about the conservatory. So would you like to, we can start with that, I think would be a good idea. Okay? Yes, it's okay. Thank you. All right. So I'm going to close this, share my screen, okay. All right, so there we have our, where we are today, our graduate open house, and this is a uh, from a performance of our conservatory singers and the symphonic choir. And featured there is Alejandro Marquez, who is a baritone. He graduated last semester. And this is a night, a beautiful nighttime picture of our brand new state of the art performing arts center, the Tao Center for the Performing Arts. And this is our beautiful auditorium where many of our concerts are mounted. It has fantastic acoustics. So here we have a focus on our performance area. We have an international faculty. Uh, a lot of performing opportunities if you also have uh, performance skills and important for you is the collaborations with the composers. So it is our performance students who will be performing the works of the composers and one of the wonderful things about our program is the collaboration between the performers and the composers. The composers are able to have their works performed and Professor Cohen will tell you more about that. This is our conservatory orchestra. If you are um, chosen to be a composer in residence, then you can uh, write for the orchestra and have your piece performed. We also have a wonderful opera program. The vocal area has the large symphonic choir and a more chamber-like uh, ensemble called Conservatory Singers. And then we have our contemporary music ensemble. And again, that's an opportunity for composers to write original music, which will be performed by this ensemble in concerts, which are uh, sometimes one or two per semester sometimes three even. Uh, one slide that's not here it has to do with the composer's concerts, but Professor Cohen will talk to you about that. We have special concerts that are designated just for the composers. And then we, our newest program is the Global and Contemporary Jazz Studies. And here we have the focus on composition. We also have the electroacoustic ensemble and an important um, series of concerts that are put on every year. Is it by yearly, Professor Cohen, or is it one, just once a year, right? The, the festival. 
Uh, this year would probably be just just once. Uh, George Bruner has been um, the artistic director. It's the International Electroacoustic Music Festival, and uh, it's normally once every semester. November uh, was there was an electroacoustic music day like you know thirty years ago, and he started the concerts. Maybe, yeah, like maybe that long ago. Um, and then uh, uh, it became a month, so uh, they would do a week-long festival. And then uh, there was enough interest that he did one also in April. But I, because of the pandemic and the lack of access to the campus this semester, he decided not to have a festival this semester, but we're hoping that we'll have one in um, April, even if it's remote. Of course, we're still not sure what's going to happen as far as campus access yet. And this isn't necessarily something you're interested in, but we also have music education programs and a musicology program. And here's something about our campus. We have a beautiful campus. And this is, uh, these pictures are taken in this wonderful spot that we have called the Lily Pond. Uh, it's just a, a beautiful a spot with a pond and you can't see the pond in this picture but it's surrounded by cherry trees and we have a special outdoor concert series called the lily pond series which when we're on campus we have in the fall and in the spring and that's it so i think i'll turn you over to i'll stop the share I'll turn you over to Professor Cohen, uh, but first I think Nicolette, you'll do the poll, right? Alrighty, hi, I'm Sergio. So I'm just gonna administer a poll and it's, we're gonna, um, it's around 90 seconds. You're just gonna answer four questions and I'm gonna administer the poll right now. Okay, and you just have to answer these questions in about 90 seconds, whenever you're ready. in a minute or so. Okay. Oh, you finished it already? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Alrighty. So I'll end the poll since you're done. Okay. And thank you. Alrighty. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Alrighty. Whenever you guys are ready. All right. Hi. So, uh, Sergio, uh, as Professor uh, Lewis mentioned, I'm Douglas Cohen, um, and I do work largely with the undergraduate programs, but also with all of the music composition students, both undergraduate and graduate, and uh, the lead coordinator is the composer Jason Eckhart. Um, but, uh, you know, if you apply to the program, I'll be in contact with you, as, as will he, as far as the procedures and um, um, you know uh, your portfolio and all of that. Uh, what's your interest? In, what type of uh, music do you compose, or what's your interest in the composition program? Uh, well, I look your web page about composition, about master of composition. I look every professor that is in the web page, the mm -hmm. composition faculty. Um, I interested in in the composition program because I, I think that is um, uh, a stuff with a great variety of styles of mm -hmm. colors of music. So I interested in this kind of uh, college of music because uh, I don't I don't have a, a college that have just a one kind of music. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I prefer. Uh, I don't know, uh, a lot of colors in the music. So um, I would like to know um, about the about the admission, mm -hmm. about the, the portfolio. I looked that it was a, uh, it, you recommend five pieces of music. Uh, yes, up to five, yes. Yeah, I, I, I would like to know a little more about this, about what do you want to see and to hear in the music that we will to present for you. Mm -hmm. Great, excellent. Well, uh, 
I'm, I'm glad that you noticed that our faculty is quite um, diverse as far as music compositional styles and interests. Um, if you saw my profile, I'm more uh, involved with um, experimental music, even though um, I started with the more traditional training as far as uh, music composition. Um, but yes, as, as far as the portfolio, three to five pieces, really no more than five. And um, we have that site where, and we can go to the link to, to show where you can submit that. Uh, but we're interested in a range of the type of music that you compose and you're interested in composing. Um, you know, as a graduate composer, of course, we're looking for some development of a, of a personal style but also, you know, our goal is to try to, you know, find out what, what your interests and goals are and uh, be sure that we're going to be able to help you develop those skills. Um, so um, I know if you, if you do uh, any sort of, um, if you do more instrumental, but you also do electronic or you also do more pop oriented or um, uh, even jazz, uh, uh, you know, anything that you're interested in, um, it's good to display. It's good to have some ensemble music. If you've written for a small mixed ensemble, solo music's fine. Um, but again, the range, if you've written for large groups, um, if it's improvisatory, um, you know, just basically try to make a portrait of of you as a composer in what you upload. That would be my recommendation. Uh, well, um, uh, in the web page, uh, mm -hmm. that there is five, re your recommendation is by piece of music about mm -hmm. a solo, an ensemble, orchestra, uh, mm -hmm. film media, I think, and electronic. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, it's important to present all this kind of music, or I could present, I could avoid about field media or about electronic music and replace that a uh, that kind of music. I could present an extra ensemble piece of music or an extra orchestra. This absolutely, yeah. Our our uh, we simply wanted to give lots of different examples, not that not that we're expecting you to submit things and of. Uh, from all of those different types of genres. Uh, so absolutely. And, and some people have a very narrow focus, right? They wanna work only with ensembles, large groups, they really aren't interested in electronics. That's fine. You know, um, if, if you have a more narrow focus, present that. Um, so yeah, whatever you uh, shows you your interest the best um, would help us understand your interest and how we can help you. That that's what I would suggest. And um, another question: And mm -hmm. there is a, um, a specific duration about the music? How, I mean, I like a seven minutes, eight minutes, or? Uh, there are no no there are no um, uh, limitations for the portfolio as far as duration. Um, you know, the, the faculty will look closely at everything and listen closely to everything you submit. Um, they may not necessarily listen to the whole thing. They may scan through depending on, you know, um, what they're looking for. Similar to a performance audition, you don't necessarily have to perform an entire piece. Sometimes the jury will be happy with what you've presented so far and, you know, they're going to pass you on to the, and they want to see another example. So that sometimes happens with the uh, composition portfolio as well. But let's say you, I mean, one of my teachers was Morton Feldman. He was writing pieces that were eight hours long without break at the end of his life. Um, if you wanted to present all eight hours of a piece, we would be glad to have it. And probably one of us would download it and listen to it. Um, so yeah, for the portfolio, there's no problem with that. Um, um, there's another question. Uh, do you recommend that um, recently composition? Yes, something recent would be good. That will give us a good good idea of um, your what you're working on now and what your interests are yes but recently is like uh, um, 2015 17 more or less yeah I, uh, yeah I wouldn't worry about that that's recent enough 
yes. Okay, okay. Yeah, I I think that's that is my question. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um I have um a I think we call this a curriculum map, just has a little bit of an outline of the composition program just to get for you to get a feel of what it would be like to be a student, what type of courses you're taking. Um, and some of this actually parallels uh, what we do in the performance program as, as well. Um, so I'll try to share this. It's a 30 credit program. And uh, most students uh, complete the program in two years. And this would be an example for um, four semesters. And uh, the, quite often we recommend fewer credits in the beginning, um, especially if someone is not a New York State resident, but they intend to be a New York resident. That way they can live here a year, gain residency, and then they'll have the in-state tuition for their second year. Um, but it can also be done part time if you have a full time job and extended over three years. Um, so these courses, um, there are four semesters of the music composition lesson. So we like you to start that right away. And that 7321, 7322, 23, and 7940 is your master's composition thesis, which is also um, combined with lessons. Um, in the program, uh, everybody takes a seminar called STEM, Seminar in Style Criticism, and we'd like you to take that in the first semester if possible, because that helps prepare you for graduate study in music. And then everyone's required to take at least one music theory seminar, and we have that here in this example in the spring, and these are the course numbers for that, and one music history seminar, and here's a selection of the course numbers for that. Um, so we have the three required seminars. We have four composition seminars, thesis being one of those. And uh, then there are requirement for eight more elective credits in music. So those can be other seminars, performing ensembles, which are one credit. Um, and one ensemble is required, which in this example, we have that in your spring semester. And uh, that is, I believe the complete, the next page we'll see for sure. In addition to that, uh, we do have um, a requirement that uh, you need to be proficient in a language other than English for reading and translation. Um, if you're fluent in another language, um, that would, satisfy that requirement. If you're not, we have reading exams uh, in many different languages. Professor Lewis actually administers that. We would give you a short excerpt in the, in, on music and the language that you select, and you would translate that into idiomatic English. Um, and there's assistance with that um, if you need that. Um, doctoral programs often require two languages, so this is sort of on that model. Um, I guess one thing I should say is this program, um, many people who come to this program are interested in doctoral study in music and or uh, in music composition and or composition and theory. So um, some of the requirements such as the language requirement comprehend um, to help prepare you for that. So have any interest in teaching a, a doctoral program is usually a requirement. So um, sort of the requirements. And uh, then as part of your thesis semester of lessons, uh, you will create a larger scale composition. Now, it, it could be a wide range. It depends on your interests and um, the music composition teacher you work with. Um, but that does not necessarily need to be completed in that fourth semester of lessons. It's simply that's the last semester where you will where you will have weekly lessons. I think you have up to five years total to complete the program. Professor Lewis will know for sure, um, and uh, you can submit the thesis any time within that. Most of our students either uh, complete the program in two years, thesis and all, 
or they do most of the coursework in two years and in the third year they submit the thesis. Um, the time limit for the degree, for any graduate degree at Brooklyn College is actually seven years. Oh, seven years. Wow, yeah. so that's more generous. It's not recommended. Uh, well, the truth it, is... Yeah, yeah, the longer it takes one to, to get through the graduate program, the harder it is to finish up. So it's, uh, but you do have, they do allow up to seven years. Sometimes, well, there's a reason for that. Um, the graduate student is usually a little bit older and as one gets older, life gets more complicated and sometimes things interfere with the studies. So whether it be, you know, a job or, you know, maybe uh, one gets married, has children, uh, there could be illness. So that allows for the student to take time off. So you're allowed to take a leave of absence, something that you have to get permission and apply for. But that's why it allows the flexibility for the graduate student to finish the degree and take as long as seven years to do it. Beyond that, then you run into problems with graduation. But that is the, the time limit. Thank you. And I, so something to keep in mind with this program, it is only 30 credits. So to be technically full time and pay a flat rate for tuition, it's 12 to 18 credits. Uh, since you only need 30 credits, that averages to seven and a half credits a term and uh, means that you'll be paying part time tuition. So the cost, when you look at the um, estimated cost on the Brooklyn College website, it'll actually be a little bit less because it's unlikely that you'll ever take 12 credits in a term. In this example, the most we have is nine credits in one semester. Um, so it is in that way um, for a graduate program quite affordable. Um, if you need full-time credit, uh, full-time equivalency, um, let's say you're an international student and you need to demonstrate that, um, we have uh, the ability to give you full-time equivalency because again, the model of a doctoral program, you're doing a lot of independent work. I mean, we really do put you in practice in the mold of a um, scholar composer where a lot of the work is not in the seminars. A lot of the work is your own independent work and um, you will be doing that for your comprehensive exams. So we're able to, um, I think nine credits is technically the minimum for equivalency and we're able to um, validate that for you. Okay, um, I, have, I have a question. Um, I don't know, there is a, a like assistantship or fellowship for overseas students in the composition area? Um, we have some scholarships that are competitive. Um, there are some for composers and those would be likely, most likely to go to graduate composers since your costs are higher and you have less resources as far as financial aid um, than undergrads, but they're very limited. Um, probably the, a, a couple of the things that we have that are, um, uh, helpful for composers is we do have some graduate fellowships, which um, uh, I think they pay a certain basically salary per year. And uh, your fellowship work can be uh, either assisting a professor or a program or teaching. Mm -hmm. And uh, this year, um, all of the graduate fellows have been uh, required to do teaching as part of their work. And then the remaining hours go towards assisting programs. But next year, we're hoping things will be better and, and most of those fellowships will um, go to um, uh, like mostly doing the work with the programs because we need them. Uh, there's one specifically in music composition to help coordinate that program. Um, we have, as Professor Lou was saying, composers concerts at the end of every semester. We also have a composers forum with guest composers scheduled throughout the term. 
Um, we help with the International Electroacoustic Music Festival. And then um, in the spring semester, we have a winter composers concert when uh, the semester starts. And that is part of the Composers Now Festival, which is a citywide uh, music festival. And then the composition students on their own as part of their club have often had a concert in October. So there are generally at least three different opportunities that are um, in our calendar for composers to present their work. Uh, the ones at the end of the semester are required as part of your lessons, but the other two we encourage you to participate in. And uh, so that assistant helps with all of that. And then the Center for Computer Music, which um, also is part of the Sonic Arts program for people who have a lot of skills in music technology, there's an assistantship there. So those are the ones that most composers um, have and worked on. And Contempo, May I, we can add Contempo too, yeah? Oh, yeah, absolutely, yeah. right. Contempo. There is there's one with the Contemporary Music Ensemble. It's not a full fellowship, but um, it has assistantship money that goes along with it. Um, the other thing we have are graduate assistant, what do they call that? Uh, college assistants. There are some college assistant hours that are tied to graduate students, not to uh, um, not, not the larger pool of people that could be a college assistant. Um, so I guess the challenge is as, as an international student, of course, you're paying a higher per credit cost. Um, so being 30 credits, does make this, um, you know, more reasonable than some of the other graduate music programs, uh, especially the ones over at the Feuerstein School, which have excellent fees on top. Um, but uh, we also understand that uh, the budget um, is, a, is a big issue with that. So we can help in some ways. Um, we're not going to be able to overcome the extra cost of the um, out-of-state tuition, unfortunately, but we certainly will work with you. Um, depending on how enrollments go, I mean, so my suggestion is when you apply um, that uh, you download and we can direct you to our scholarship request form. And in that request form, list all of your abilities. Like if you're a pianist and you can accompany ensembles, put that in there. Um, if any teaching experience you've had, if you can teach music theory, you can teach any sort of um, um, you did ear training, you taught any history courses, you teach on popular music, you know, any, any skill you have, uh, list that because uh, the group that uh, faculty that reviewed those, uh, first we're looking for scholarships, but then later on when we have these other positions to fill, we go back to those. And uh, so the more information uh, you have in there, you know, the more things that will be open to you. So, well, I actually, I have experience as a student. Mm -hmm. My brother, my, I did for three years an assistantship. So this could help me to obtain an assistantship in the Brooklyn College. Yes, absolutely. The, uh, please describe the assistantship you had and your responsibilities, absolutely. That would be helpful. Okay, thank you. So this other page is is simply a uh, checklist with the different areas that I that we saw on the uh, curriculum map, the style criticism requirement, the four semesters of music composition, the history seminar requirement, theory seminar requirement, and one of the ensembles, and then the eight additional credits uh 7000 level courses in music and i can email this to you i think we'll we're going to be getting your information at the end and i'll go ahead and email this to you so you have that and you'll have my contact information you can ask me any of the questions you have um with the residencies um uh, since uh, that was brought up and i should i should definitely go into that um you are working with music uh, students by and large as far as getting your pieces performed but we do have residencies with the ensembles professor Eckhart um, finds out which ensembles are available each semester and um, uh, lets the composers know and then uh, 
people make requests and then decisions are made on, on who is which. So if you're interested in residencies with different groups, it's likely that you'll have one. Uh, the orchestra residency has changed. It used to be a competitive um, uh, residency with score submissions, but the composition faculty um, in conjunction with our orchestra director um, have decided that it actually is more productive if the students that are in our orchestration classes, the music composers in the orchestration classes, uh, write for the orchestra uh, for that end of semester concert. And uh, so that's what we're going to be trying to do. That way there's not only your composition teacher, but you have an orchestration teacher. And the wonderful thing about um, Professor Rothman, the orchestra directors, he also works directly with the composers. So those are really um, some of our best residencies, but it's going to be open to more composers this way. And we think it's going to also be um, uh, a better experience for everybody because it can be directly related to not only your composition lessons, but to your orchestration class. So even if you've had orchestration, we have some advanced orchestration seminars. And if that interests you, we would certainly encourage you to do that. Uh, so, well, um, how many times could I, uh, I don't know, I, I, um, prove my music with an ensemble uh, or an orchestra at Brooklyn College? I'm, I'm sorry, I'm um, not sure if I understand exactly. Uh, you're asking how many different opportunities could you have? Yeah, yeah that's, that's it. Um, you know, really, so my recommendation is if you're interested, you should apply every semester to something. Some semesters, not many people request an ensemble. And then we wonder, should we go to all the trouble to do this? So if you're interested, you should always put your name in. Um, it's, you could have something every four, every um, semester. Uh, your first semester in the program, we recommend you do something smaller anyway, because you're just getting to know the faculty and the other students in the program and the other performers. Um, so generally, it would maybe be up to you know, three different semesters with an ensemble would be on the high side. Um, but uh, with the, for example, the Winter Composers concert, uh, for those, it's early in the spring semester. So uh, ensembles are just getting started. Uh, part of the requirements are that you've put together performers on your own uh, to commit to that over the winter break so that you can start rehearsing. So those concerts can have larger groups that are well rehearsed and you're directly involved in that. So that's something I would encourage you to take advantage of each year as well. And um, it depends on how ambitious you are. Um, you know, we have, uh, we will work with you, the Contemporary Music Ensemble. They help out with the composers' concerts. That's part of their um, uh, part of their requirements. Uh, or at least um, um, they've uh, been generous enough to do that. Um, but uh, we have one composer. She wanted to do her own opera, and she put together all the musicians. And she found a time after all of the concerts were over when the musicians and the singers would get together and perform her opera. So that was ambitious, a lot of work. Um, some complaining from performers, right? Cause she's really working them hard to get them to do this. But in the end, it was a really great performance and performers and, the comp and she and everybody benefited from that. So, I mean, there's a lot that your own initiative can do. Okay, I understand, thank you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. So it's, Good to meet you. You know, if you have any questions, um, again, I'll email this uh, document to you and, you know, you can follow up. We can get you in touch with other composers in the program, you know, anything that might be helpful to you. Okay. So if I have uh, any question in the future, I could send an email? Yeah, actually, I'll put that in the chat.
okay. Thank you so much. All right, you're welcome. Good to meet you.